What's up, fucking cocksuckers? <laughs> What's up, you pieces of shit? It's uh, it's your fucking boy. Oh my god, we uh, we have a pop up studio here. Um, we have an amazing guest coming on next week, so uh, we're testing out a new studio, which is a fucking garage. So, um, I don't know. Right now, it doesn't sound too great, so we'll see if that is the case all the way through. But if not, you know, if it sounds like fucking absolute dog shit, then then it fucking sounds like dog shit. You know, it's a goddamn, it's a free podcast of a fucking, you know, guy having a mental breakdown every week. Okay. So what the fuck do you want? Um, hello. Welcome back to the uh, number one podcast on the planet. The pop-up studio uh, live in, uh, live from Brian Laundry's home in, uh, in, in Florida. Uh, we were able to rent out the, uh, his room. They said that uh, they was no longer going to need it, so his Brian Laundry's parents uh, rented it out to me for the studio, and we're going to fly out our guest next week. Um, yeah, you know, we just like we like to do live on location stuff. So uh, I thought, you know, what better place if we're going to do a pop up studio? What better place than uh, the home of Brian Laundry? Uh, fucking how? I mean, we talked about it a little bit last week with the true crime, but how fun is that right now? You know, we needed a good. Uh, a good fucking, you know, he's on the run pretty much. Uh, he's just like, you know, people can't find him. They're dropping like cryptic shit. Like this is what people needed, right? You know, like, cause they're not even really like arguing about it. Everyone's kind of like on the same team. Everyone's like, yeah, fuck this guy, which is, um, which I disagree with. All right. We've got no evidence that he killed her whatsoever. Um, innocent, an innocent man. Okay. People are just like, oh, well who, who runs and hides? Oh, if they're innocent, um, you know, anybody who doesn't want to fucking get talked into jail time because, uh, cause he's a, he's a fucking idiot. I mean, Christ, and we know he's a fucking idiot because he was like, he grew up in Long Island and then moved down to Florida. A kid had no fucking chance. All right. If he didn't kill a girl, it'd be surprising. If he ended up, if he went his entire life without killing and burying a girl, dude, that would have been fucking like, that would have been a miracle. Um, but yeah, he never had a chance, but yeah, people are fucking coming together. It's great to see people come together, uh, around a thing of trying to hunt down a, uh, a, like 23 year old man. We were confused last week of whether he was like 35 or fucking cause he's, yeah, he's one of those guys that's just balding before the age of 25. That's dangerous. You get a guy like that. I mean, if you're balding early, dude, stay away from that guy. Okay. And stay away from bald people in general. They're kind of gross. Okay. I mean, who are we, who are we kidding? You know, what are you, like, what are you doing? Just out here, like, you, what? Just don't have fucking hair on your head? It's disgusting. The fuck's wrong with you? You got shit, shit, shit genetics? Jesus Christ. And I'm, as I'm just fucking choking on my tongue. What, you got shit genetics? What, you got real shitty genetics, you stupid idiot? Um, but yeah, the country, uh, and I always, re I reference the country as in, uh, as if I live in America. I live in North America close enough. And, um, I'm a, I'm an American myself. I'm a, I'm an American at heart because, uh, Canada's fucking yo, Canada straight up gay as hell, bro. The only place that's fucking sick is Alberta. Cause they fucking stand their ground and they don't fucking bend to, uh, to, to these pussy fucking liberal, uh, liberal cuck betas. And they don't fucking, you know, they, they don't mandate fucking vaccines, even though I think they're, they are doing that and they don't fucking, you know, um, they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't enforce, they don't mandate being a fucking pussy bitch. It's like, hey, the government, the liberal government's making it mandatory that everybody becomes a fucking big pussy bitch. So, um, so yeah, go get your uh, pussy bitch shot and, uh, you know, get in line. Make sure you show your pussy bitch passport to get out there and fucking, you know, eat a $20 cheeseburger somewhere, fucking drink 10 IPAs call your girlfriend a cunt and she leaves crying and then people are just like hey man i don't know if that was you know that might have been that might have been too much and he's just like well dude well every time we fucking come out she always she always fucking runs her mouth it's like dude she was asking if you could pass the salt he's like well fucking i like i was clearly in the middle of something i was in the fucking middle of something and 
I was in the middle of like, dude, I had my fucking burger in one hand and my drink in the other hand. How could it be fucking possible for me to pass the salt? Seriously. Seriously. Like, is she fucking retarded? Honestly. And the, yeah, that the guys completely switched. They're like, you know what? You're right, actually. She is a fucking idiot. What, what kind of dumb fuck looks at a guy with, you know, both his hands are busy and asks her to pass something? What a fucking dumb bitch she is. We're on your side. Should we kill her and bury her in the woods like Brian Laudry? Um, <laughs> oh, fun times. Um, yeah, so uh, we got a great, great guest coming in next week. Um, let me just throw keys. Uh, those are keys to uh, a cage I have where I have, um, I have women and children locked up, uh, you know, for various uses. I have a farm of people. That's what, uh, you know, I got a garage. So in one half of the garage, uh, I have the studio set up where I do comedy podcasting. And on the other half of the garage, I have people locked up. Uh, so you got to make use of the space. You don't fucking, you don't get to just like, when you got a space like this, you know, you got to prioritize, you got to organize, you got to do a bunch of eyes and figure out what is the best way to, uh, you know, to use this space. And, uh, I think I did a great job of keeping my caged humans in one side, my slaves and, uh, setting up my podcasting studio And uh, dude, imagine fucking back in the day, the like slave, <laughs> slave owners having a podcast and they were just, uh, they're just podcasting about like the auctions going on and stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're just fucking yeah talking about different plantations and just talking about different slave trade on the podcast just a bunch of fucking whiteies just setting up some mics and uh just yeah just dropping a couple friendly end bombs um dude honestly they should have had podcasting back in the day imagine the great audio we would have had if people in like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s yo the people in the 80s had podcasts and we st- and that was out on the internet for anyone to find, dude. Your parents, everybody's parents, would be fucking like they would be burned. They'd be burned alive in the in the you know in the town square. They'd be they'd be stoned. They'd be stoned like they're Pakistani women that you know showed their ankle. Somebody had a uh, Pakistani woman accidentally came outside with a pair of capris on and fucking uh, and uh, you know the boys didn't take a liking to it, so they. They stoned her to death right there on her fucking front step. She barely got two steps out of the goddamn house. That would be like if your parents, if you, we found their podcast from the 80s of your parents just uh, just absolutely hammering the, uh, the uh, you know, offensive terms, um, you know, using some colorful language, uh, you know, just fucking just being just being back when they were fun before they fucking had kids and turned into, you know, some fucking dorks. Um, uh, man, dude. Oh, this is fucking sick. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, fuck what's been going on this week? Um, honestly, fucking dude, I'm just too much of a fucking grinder to even know what the hell is going on in the world. Um, the only thing I got time for right now, straight up is, uh, is fucking, uh, the gym work. Uh, you know, fucking fantasy football, dude, fantasy football is fantasy football extends so many male friendships, like decades past their expiry date, just based off of fantasy football. They like the friendship actually ended 20 years ago, but these guys are still in contact and still communicating September through fucking February every year because they have fantasy football. They don't talk about life. They don't talk about anything going on. Maybe somebody will mention it, but people will be like, oh, damn. Like, he's like, yeah, my wife fucking, you know, died of leukemia. And the guy will just be like, oh, damn, that fucking sucks. Do you think I should start Aaron Jones this week? I don't know. I think, uh, I think Mike Evans has some, has some tough coverage this week against Jalen Ramsey. Um, oh, damn. Uh, yeah, sorry about your, uh, oh, fuck. I didn't realize you're, uh, oh, you don't have time? Your kid's in chemo? Okay, well, this question is just really quick, bro. It's just quick. Um, I'm just thinking Mike Evans has a, t- has a tough matchup. Bro, don't fuck it. Dude, what are you... T- dude, no, t- don't fucking hang up. Your kid's fucking chemo? I'm having a lineup crisis over here. You fucking out of your mind? Um, 
But yeah, like the friendship, like you don't even care about each other's lives barely anymore, but then you're just chatting back and forth about, yeah, football players. And dude, the funniest shit ever with uh, fantasy football is like somebody will like die on the field, like literally fucking die. And this is how Pat, like outside, like people have gone beyond the people even on the like sports and TV being human. They'll see somebody literally get paralyzed. Like we'll never walk again. And the guy will be like, oh, for fuck's sakes, that was my starting wide receiver. Like, it just cuts to, like, his family and his kids crying and, like, his wife's, like, on her knees, like, fucking is, like, the worst moment of her life. Husband's getting fucking carted off the field. Can't move. Does one of those things where, like, he he's able to put one thumb up on the way out, as his, but he can't use the rest of his body and the whole, like, everyone's, like, crying and clapping. And this guy's just in the fucking, in his house, just in his living room. Screaming, oh, for fuck's sakes! That was my fucking, that was my RB2! God damn it, there's fucking, there's trash running backs on the, on the wire. And that was my fucking, that was my running back. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Christ fucking just my luck. I picked the one fucking running back that goes and gets himself paralyzed. What a fucking dick. What a cunt. Fuck that guy. God damn it. That's what you fucking, that's what you get. I don't want to, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm glad he got paralyzed. I don't want to fucking, I don't want my guy dropping out with like a sprained ankle or some pussy shit. If you're going to go out at least fucking, you know, I want you to be fucking basically dead. You got to be basically dead to let my team down. My fucking team with my $50 league. All right. It's, more, it's about more than that. I got to fucking, you know, I got to, I got to beat these guys that I'm not, that I haven't been friends with for fucking 10 years or they're going to hold it over me. This is all I have. Okay. I'm a manager at Sport Check. I fucking fantasy football is all I got. All right. I can't fucking I can't. I can't fucking deal with uh with uh with you know the 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 humiliation of losing every year. You know? So uh fuck that dude. But um yeah, just fantasy football uh is doing that, you know, trying to dude, the one time I took it so seriously and this is where I was like, oh, fuck this thing. Because I took it so seriously one year and I, you know, listening to podcasts, fucking doing research, being a, I was at college. So it's like, who gives a fuck? That's pretty much like your major. That's like a major you can take probably at most colleges now. Just fantasy football. I'm a, yeah, I'm a daily fantasy. I'm in uh, the, you know, oh, what, 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 what program are you in? It's not, I'm in daily fantasy sports, uh, de- you know, degree or it's a diploma either or uh, fucking, yeah, either one. I think it might be a four year, four year degree. It's like, oh, really? It's like, yeah, we go over a lot of stuff, you know, the probability, a lot of probability, uh, you know, a lot of uh, lineup uh, optimize, optimization. Uh, you know, you got to fucking know the players. You got to, uh, you got to study. You got to know offenses. You got to know defenses. You got to know strike the schedule. Uh, these are all things, you know, and you can make fucking big bucks. All right. There's people that are, you know, living on DraftKings for, uh, you know, they're making fucking serious bucks out there. There's people on DraftKings that are, uh, you know, watching football and uh, basketball all year with their fucking, you know, medium to small dick in their hand and, you know, just shoving fucking pizzas down their throat and just making hundreds of thousand dollars a year because they fucking, they went and got their goddamn degree in daily fantasy sports, okay? Um, so don't be fucking laughing like you know what the fuck's going on with your PhD. What is that? Poor as hell dickhead degree? Fucking got him. He just like fist bumps his buddies. Yeah, fucking nice PhD, fucking P head degree. Oh, shit. Fucking poo head. Fuck. Um, but yeah, I, I, I spent so much time doing it. And that was the year I won. And then after that, I was like, oh, well, I actually don't care about winning if I have to spend, you know, 10 hours a week doing research for this bullshit. And then at the end of the day, yeah, somebody gets paralyzed. And then I get it. Then I turn into that guy. I see somebody get paralyzed. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sakes. God fucking damn it. And then, um, yeah, then it's like a whole fucking thing, you know? Um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, man, I've just been busy. Just grinding. When you just put your fucking head down, when you're a fucking alpha male, bro, when you're a straight up alpha male, um, actually fucking, <laughs> dude, <laughs> Uh, I was just talking about that yesterday, actually, but fucking dude, the alpha male shit is so funny, dude. Any guy that has ever like genuinely fucking in 
all earn it like just legitimately said I am an alpha male dude that is the most fucking beta cuck shit that could ever exist I'm an alpha male like where do you even where would that even come up like I got to find videos. There's, oh no. All right. Okay. Hold on. We got to fucking watch this. 10 signs you're an alpha male and don't even know it. Oh, hell yeah, bro. Dude. Absolutely. Oh no. Or which one's better? Seven things alpha males do that beta males don't. All right. Um, okay. Hold on. I got to fire up this. Uh, um, let me see here. Uh, see if I can connect this bitch. Um, oh yeah. Okay. We're connected. We're connected, you fucking pieces of shit. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready to be fucking alphas, bro? Dude, fucking you stupid beta liberal cuck pussies. Are you guys ready to learn how to be fucking alphas? Dude, imagine being a guy and just looking at another guy in the face who's just like, I don't know, annoying you or something. He's be like, bro, I don't know if you want to fucking do this. I'm, a, I'm an alpha, bro. I'm a fucking straight up alpha. I'm an alpha male, brother. Are you sure you want to fucking do what you're about to do right now? I'm a fucking alpha male, bro. I'm a fucking lion. I'm a lion amongst, you know, all I see out here is zebras. Zebras and antelope. And I'm a lion. Somebody fucking, I, I just sit back. Sit back in the savannah and I watch, I watch antelope and zebra. That are these people around here. I watch them cross. Cross the fucking, you know. The, 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 the desert, the, uh, you know, and I wait until I choose when I want to fucking take any one of these cocksuckers down. And you could use that in any, any instance for that, like that, whether it be like business wise, if I want to take this motherfucker down, take over like business and fucking business wise and win and, you know, make more money than him, uh, be more successful than him, uh, fucking, you know, build a bigger business than him, I'll do it. I'll fucking take that motherfucker down. Whether it be a woman, I want. I fucking sit back and I wait. And I see her coming through. I fucking wait. I see all these fucking, you know, these zebra women, these antelope women, these fucking, you know, antelope women with the fucking straight up cantaloupes on the fucking chest. And uh, talk about them big tits. And uh, and then, I, I, then when I see one that I fucking want, I pounce and I attack. And I always fucking get it. Because I'm a goddamn lion, bro. You fucking kidding me? Um, <laughs> dude, I want to be that guy so bad, dude. I want to be a fucking delusional piece of shit idiot. It looks so much fun. It looks like these guys are having a fucking time of their lives. They just like, they just do and say whatever. And like, I mean, obviously it's not all great because everyone fucking hates them. But I don't know. Something seems nice about... uh about like, you know, just having zero self-awareness and just having all the confidence in the world. It seems kind of nice. Like you're just literally like a fucking, you know, a like the ultimate dumb fuck and like just the biggest douchebag in the world, but you just have the like the confidence of like a fucking, you know, a Navy SEAL, like somebody that's like, you know, can actually do something. And you're just like some guy that, you know, like has muscles and fucking, you know, works a job somewhere has like parents that had money. And you're just like, I'm a fucking alpha. Um, all right, well, we're going to check in with, uh, we're gonna do seven things that, uh, alpha males do that beta males don't. There's no way that this is not going to piss me off. All right, let's fucking go. Whoa, whoa, chill. Gentlemen, in this world, there are two types of men. There are alphas and there are betas. Alphas are strong, betas are weak. My oh boy, it comes in hot with the double earrings and... <laughs> Homie's got the hoops. He's got the little hoops. And he comes screaming at the camera. There's fucking two types of guys out here. There's guys that fucking are alpha males that wear hoop earrings like me. And then there's fucking 
beta bitches like you that, ha- that don't even have their ears pierced. Which one are you? I would suggest you go to your fucking... Go to your local fucking tattoo shop right now and, uh, and get your fucking ears pierced. And don't be a fucking beta bitch. All right, I'm so excited to learn how to be an alpha male. There are alphas and there are betas. Alphas are strong. Betas are weak. My goal is for each and every one of you to develop into incredibly alpha dudes that are strong. <laughs> oh my God, I fucking hate this already. Ugh. Dude, fuck this. How many views does this have? 604. What are the comments like? (laughs) I'm a girl and I would never date a guy who watches these alpha videos. LOL. Teaching people to be alpha is such a beta move. (laughs) Wow. Okay. This is terrifying. Men like this are why I cover my drink at parties. What an alpha move it is to fucking roofie a chick. Dude, that's real alpha shit that are confident, that are caring, that are compassionate, because it is impossible for you to truly kick this world's ass if you are beta, if you are weak, if you are submissive. Gentlemen, today, I'm going to go over seven signs that you are indeed alpha or potentially a little beta. Number one, alphas are leaders. They're leaders in their peer group. They're leaders at work. They're leaders in society. Betas are followers. Betas just do what they need to do in order to get by. They don't want to rock the boat. Alphas are strong. Oh, no. He fucking pounded his chest. Oh. Fuck. So alpha to fucking pound your chest? Betas are followers. (laughs) Betas just do what they need to do in order to get by. They don't want to rock the boat. Boom. Alphas Alphas are... Oh, dude. Fuck this guy. Strong. They take control of situations. Alphas speak up and stand up for what's right. They don't just keep their mouth shut when they see an injustice or something that's not right. They take care of themselves, but they also take care of other people, which is number two. Alphas are caring. They're compassionate. They take care of other people, not just themselves. Betas aren't worried about anything else. They don't care how something affects other people. It's all about them. Betas are egotistical and self-centered. Alphas think about the greater good. It's not just about them and how things affect them they're there to be a benefit to other people instead of trying to keep somebody down they grab their hand lift them up and say come on amigo we're going to kick ass together Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. dude also the fucking way that this video is set up is the most beta shit this guy's like just against a like wall and just some fucking room and he's just like bouncing around and like jumping around and he's like doing fucking act outs and shit talking about being fucking alpha. Dude, alphas are fucking caring, dude. We see a fucking dude, we see a, a we see a wounded animal, we pick it up and we nurse it back to health. We, betas see that and they fucking they you know, they just like they just go on about their day. Not us, dude. We fucking nurse that animal back to health and then we fucking release it back into the wild stronger than it was even before. That's what betas do. We're so fucking caring, bro. We're so caring and we just fucking... At least we're so caring that when we cheat on our girlfriends, we at least apologize. Betas, they, like, they don't even cheat on their girlfriends because they don't fucking, you know, they don't care. They don't have the... They, don't have the, they like never get the chance to. That's pretty much why. Three alphas are charming. You are a charming ass dude when you're alpha. And basically, all charming means is that you're polite, you're friendly, you're likable. If you've got a good spirit, a good character, a good personality, typically you're going to be alpha. If you're not friendly, if you're not polite, if you're not... Dude, also fucking edit this better, bro. Are you an alpha or not? An alpha puts together a fucking... Well, you got you video clips that are fucking cutting off before the goddamn, you know, shit ends. Hey, bro. Alphas fucking, alphas do the editing properly, okay? Fucking get it together. Not really that likable if you're a pessimist. That pretty much tells me that you are a beta. But alphas, people like. They want to be around them because alphas make other people feel good about themselves. This doesn't mean that alphas aren't shy at times or introverted. This just means that when they talk... This guy's just basically saying that if you're not a fucking piece of shit person, that you're an alpha. What? Like, it's just like, hey, do you go around fucking not telling everybody to fucking suck their own cock? Do you not go, do you not look people in the face and be like, hey, fuck your own ass, you piece of shit? 
Do you not do that? Then you're probably an alpha. If you go around telling everybody to, you know, finger their own fucking butts or go fuck their mom's mouth, then, then you're a fucking beta, bro. Only betas would fucking, you know, would say that shit. Only betas would fucking go around, you know, fucking saying, you know, like, yeah, dude, you probably, you know, would look you dead in the face and be like, you probably suck your dad's dick. Only that's some beta shit. You fucking kidding me? Um, dude, this guy is psychotic, eh? Holy hell. I can't, I can't, like, I can't even take this guy seriously with the fucking two earrings. He's screaming at me about, you know, like, you just pretty much, if you're not a piece of shit person, you're an alpha. Thanks. When they engage people, people typically like them because they're pleasant, they're friendly, they're kind, and they are likable. Number four, alphas don't run from their problems. Betas are like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to be mad about something that happened 27 years ago because my mommy was mean to me. It's not fair. It's not easy. Every single one of you. Okay, not going to lie. Um, that would be the most beta shit of all time. If 27 years later, you're, you were like, I still don't forget my, I, I don't forgive my mom. If she was mean to me 27 years ago, unless by being mean, it was, she like burned cigarette, like burned you with cigarettes and locked you in a cage. But even then like, bro, stop being a beta, get over it. Okay. Or like she abandoned you or something in the forest, like tried to kill you and you like got out and fucking, you know, survived. But I, I, I hope you would describe it as a little bit differently than she was mean to me. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I hate this guy's fucking act outs. And also like, you gotta, like, you gotta come up with real world shit. You're fucking, your, 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 your goddamn examples here. Are, He's going to shatter away because 27 years ago, my mom was mean to me. That's not, dude, nobody's doing that. What are you talking about? Use fucking legitimate like examples that could happen or have happened. What the fuck are you saying? of you is going to have problems and it's not something to run from it's not something to try and shield yourself from and just because you have problems doesn't mean that you're not doing something right it doesn't mean that your life is not going to be amazing gentlemen problems add meaning and purpose to your life there's an audiobook that i listen to that i love that i beg each and every one of you to listen to it's by mark manson it's called the subtle art of not giving a f a counterintuitive approach to living a good I, th I love how he ble like bleeps out fuck there, like as, as if that's the offensive part of this video. The offensive part is you fucking screaming into the camera about what an alpha male is. Like, you know what the fuck. That's offensive. Bleep out the whole thing and only say the word fuck. It's the least offensive thing about this video. A good life. That audiobook blew my mind and changed my life because I was probably in the same situation. That's beta as hell to fucking hear an audiobook and be like, that changed my life, dude. My life was one way before I listened to this fucking book on tape. And then as soon as I listened to this book on tape, I fucking, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I lead a wholly, like, completely different life now. And I'm a fucking alpha. All because of this fucking sick audiobook. Beta. situation you were right like whenever i'd have a problem I'm like why am i dealing with this why do i have to face this if i just didn't have problems i'd be happy and the truth is that's just not the case it's the problems and overcoming adversity that gives your life purpose and ultimately happiness the good news is that audible is today's video sponsor and if you're an amazon prime member oh like that's how he slid that in there oh all right that was a pretty alpha move bro pretty alpha move to fucking you know slyly fucking slide that that advertisement in um like that damn all right good on you you fucking i can't tell this i mean he's slipping back into alpha now the way he slid that fucking goddamn advertisement in damn like I am, guys, you can get three months of Audible for the price of like one. You're saving like 66%. If you hit that link down below, audible.com slash alpha M or text the word alpha M to 500. <laughs> Bro, even though that's a good deal, I would never, I would never type in that promo code alpha M. I could not fucking do it. Put in that fucking promo code Alpha M download to get fucking three audiobooks. I'm like, hey, is there another one I could use, dude? I can't. I can't fucking. <laughs> I can't type in Alpha M into the fucking promo code thing. I I I just can't do it, bro. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, like, is there is there another one I can do? Is it, can I just do like? Yeah, can I just do you know like free book or book one or something or just man? I, I literally, I, I, I'm sorry. I just can't do fucking alpha, alpha M. Ugh.
500. It's basically like getting three months for the price of one because for the first three months, you're only paying $4.95. After that, guys, regular Audible membership is only $14.95. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks like on the planet. And the cool thing when you're an Audible member, each month you get to choose one no matter what price. You also get two Audible original. Bro, get back to the fucking have it it's yours to keep you don't have to like give it back like if you stop gentlemen it's yours it's also down below audible.com slash alpha m or dude fuck text you the word 500 500 to get started today and honestly the first audiobook i would recommend you grab is the subtle art of not giving a f to help you be more alpha the fifth thing Shut that up. alphas do that betas don't is they are authentic alphas are authentically alpha they don't stop pounding your chest dude Ugh. Stop. They are authentically themselves. If you're a fucking alpha, you or you fucking are that shit. You know? You don't fucking pretend to be a fucking bitch. Alright? You fucking kidding me? Betas would never fucking punch their tits when they're speaking. That's some straight up fucking alpha shit. Alright? Imagine a beta pounding their chest when they're speaking. You can't because it doesn't fucking exist. Only fucking alphas like me that wear hoop earrings. They need to put on an act. They don't need to be something in public that they're not in private. They just change who they are depending on who they're with, who they're talking to, and what they think they can get from this person by changing who they are. With alphas, what you see is what you get. Something that I had to deal with when I first started YouTube was I was not authentic. Um, something that I'm actually very embarrassed about. When I first started YouTube, I was like, you're, you're not embarrassed by this. You used to be more embarrassing. This dude, this is, this is embarrassing. What the fuck could have came before this? Oh my God. I used to be super fucking embarrassing, but now I'm in a room by myself screaming about how I'm an alpha male for my fucking YouTube channel. Fucking promo code alpha M. Thank God I'm not fucking embarrassing anymore. Now I'm fucking sick. I was like trying to figure out what I should do. And so I sort of adopted a persona that I saw other people sort of doing and being successful with on YouTube, which meant I was rude. I was ignorant. I said some really horrible things nasty thing trying to be something that i wasn't and the minute i dropped the crap dropped the act and just let you guys see who i am was the moment that everything changed guys i beg you don't put on an act don't put on a facade for anybody be you because you are pretty freaking incredible number six shut up dude some people should fucking act a little different okay i'm not gonna be authentically myself i'm authentically myself i'll fucking you know I'll make fun of like, yeah, I'll fucking make fun of like Brian Laundry, you know, killing his girlfriend in front. Like, what am I going to do? Go over to my fucking, go over to my aunt's place and just be like, you know, we're sitting there having dinner or some bullshit. And I'm just like, Hey, I want fucking Brian Laundry. Good thing. He's good thing. Good thing. He got away with this. Huh? I don't think he did it. To be honest with you. Even if he did, she kind of deserved it. No, I mean, Christ, like just fucking, you know, you gotta, like, does that, well, that makes me a beta because I don't want to fucking, you know, joke about guy killing his girlfriend in front of my, my family. Like, sometimes, yeah. Hey, sometimes you got to know your audience, pal. That doesn't, that's not fucking beta. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Go over to your grandparents' house and just start joking about child porn. Hey, not the place. I don't know if they're going to be, I don't, I don't know if they're going to understand the nuance of the joke behind me, uh, you know, having a podcast studio in one half of my garage and having uh, caged slaves in the other. I don't know if they're going to, you know, find that too uh, amusing. And uh, what you're suggesting is that I fucking do say it anyway, because that's alpha. Alpha is fuck to do that. The fuck are you talking about? have willpower. They're able to control themselves. Betas aren't, right? When it comes to diet, when it comes to fitness, when it comes to spicy senoritas, alphas have 
discipline. They've got willpower. They're not giving in to every temptation because they know sometimes you got to say no in order to ultimately be awesome. Alphas have impulse control. They also know that going out and getting drunk and doing drugs and just doing what feels good at the moment is not necessarily what's going to help them in life. And last but certainly not least, the seventh thing that all alphas have in common is that they are strong physically and mentally. They've got strong, confident body language. When they meet somebody, they smile. They look them in the eye. They shake their hand like they mean it. When things happen that aren't amazing, they don't freak out and just like crumble into a ball and like run away screaming. They deal with it because they have the tools in order to overcome adversity. Alphas are strong mentally. They're strong Yo. emotionally. They're strong physically. Betas, on the other hand, not so much. Sick. And it's a shame because there are a lot of you out there that could be so incredibly kick-ass awesome. But unfortunately, instead of doing the hard work and being disciplined, choose to take the easy path. Now, I'm not saying that someday you're not going to get there. But if you are viewed by other people as weak or a pushover, people are going to walk all over you. You have to believe in yourself. You've got to have the confidence and the ability to stand up for what's right, not what's easy. You've got to stand up for yourself. You've got to speak your mind. You are incredibly alpha. Don't let anybody tell you differently. I don't want you to succumb <laughs> to the beta mentality that's so prevalent in today's world because you kick so much ass. It's freaking ridiculous. Oh, no. Oh, my fucking God. Dude, look at the fucking wink. That's literally the fucking most insane shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Holy fuck. That is terrible. All right, we have to go through this fucking comment section. <laughs> okay, holy, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on here, holy fuck. All right, one sec, we got to fucking, we got to, we got to, we got to take a quick two second break here. Okay, you beta cucks, we're back. Um, all right, we got to go through this fucking comment section real quick here. Um, okay. <laughs> Wait, do people actually unironically watch these LMAO? <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, fuck. That is, dude. If somebody is just like, you know what? You know what? Fuck the audiobooks. You know what changed my life? Fucking what's this guy? Alpha oh, Alpha M on uh, dude. Six point three eight million subscribers. Oh my fucking god! Wow, that is so fucked up. Um. Oh my God. <laughs> I joke about this stuff in party chats, but this uh, party chats, ugh. but this guy is insane. As a boy, this is Zodiac signs for males. Do dude, that's a fucking great point. This is fucking, yeah, this is astrology for fucking guys is like the alpha male fucking culture. Like, oh my God. Okay. Like, yeah. Holy fuck, that's a that is an outstanding point. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> what are these alpha fucking uh oh my god. Oh, there's there's other guys? Different male personalities. There's gammas, there's omegas. There's you gotta get your fucking omegas in. Um Sigmas. Oh my god. Um, what? What the fuck is this? Dude, what the fuck is Alpha Males never do this? There's a picture of him kissing an ass. What the fuck? Dude, this guy is fucking sick, dude. Um, yeah, the, the male, the, the, the astrology of the men shit is, a uh, um, Alpha Male. I want to see what Alpha Male, like, graphics are. Um, yeah, Wolf. What are you talking about? Well, you're a fucking wolf. Are you out of your fucking goddamn mind? What are you saying? Eight brutally honest reasons you're not it. Dude, this guy has a whole, this guy's his whole thing is fucking just screaming about fucking being an alpha male. Eight, six point whatever fucking million goddamn followers. Oh, dude. TikTok has got to have some alpha male shit. What is this? 
Hello and welcome to my Grease Dojo. Most likely when you look at me you see an alpha male, a very intimidating specimen that encapsulates everything it means to be a masculine man in today's climate. But, just like Qui-Gon Jinn says, there's always a bigger fish. Today I'm going to show you what a real alpha looks like. Looks like something straight off of a Greek god statue. Looks like something you'd only read about in the Bible, basically what God wanted when he created men, but something went awry in the formula and we were left with only one true chosen alpha. What the and fuck this is alpha happening? Lives where all great men do on TikTok. So join <laughs> me as we take a look at the only alpha left in the world. Now, hopefully you're wearing pants you don't mind getting a little wet, panties you don't mind getting a little sodden, because you're gonna need the disclaimer, because this you're not dealing with just a man. You're dealing with the alpha. My bitch got a body like Alba. What up, Alpha Familia. Okay, I gotta go straight to the source here. I gotta go straight to the source. Sorry, pal. I mean, I'm sure your video is fucking great. Um, dude, Alpha. Dude, but like, seriously, what are these guys even talking about? What is what is happening? What is happening with these guys that they fucking need some guy, you know, screaming about like them being fucking, you know. Like, uh, um, like, yeah, they just gotta be like, hey, bro, like, you know, fucking people make eye contact. Is it, yeah, they know that. They know fucking that, uh, you know, people make eye contact. Like, what are you talking about? If you wanna be a straight fucker, you gotta tell it like it is, dude. You see some injustice going on, you know what a fucking, if an alpha male, uh, a fucking, you know, a, uh, a, oh, dude. Ah, oh, it looks like this is a joke, but, um, yeah, an alpha male, when, uh, when, when an alpha male inevitably stumbles across a, a, a fucking girl getting raped, he will, he will fucking, he will jump, he will jump in and fucking, and help, and he'll stop the fucking guy. A beta male will join in and also rape the girl. That's the difference, okay? You're fucking, you know, you're a beta if you don't fucking, if you join in on the, on the rape and don't stop it. Are you fucking kidding me? Um... Yeah, but like, like, oh man, who, who are the people that saw that, so like, watch that guy's videos and be like, oh my god, like, my my whole life has changed. Um. All right, whatever. Dog, I'm the alpha, so you better watch out, bro. And that goes for anyone around us. You beta male cuck! I bet you're shaking right now, just even looking, gazing upon the. <laughs> um. Holy fuck. Okay. Well, that's fucking. That didn't that didn't work out with anything uh okay alpha male strategies um 12 subtle habits of alpha males um dude fucking 10 things confident alpha males never do all right i can't take that fucking guy anymore we're moving off of we're moving off of that shit um oh man uh I've been fucking, dude, every, like, I, I can't stop with fucking Harry Potter, bro. I have a serious fucking Harry Potter problem. We're going to get, we're going to get off the alpha males. And we're going to turn, well, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about my alpha male shit, which is, uh, I can't stop watching fucking Harry Potter. Um, and that's straight up alpha male shit. And I won't fucking hear it otherwise, because if you don't like Harry Potter, as far as I'm concerned, you're a fucking beta liberal fucking Antifa cuck bitch pussy. All right. Straight up, if you're not fucking, if you don't fuck with, you know, with the Wizarding World, with Harry Potter and the in the fucking gang, Ron, Hermione, Hagrid, Dumbledore, the rest of the crew, if you don't fuck with that shit, you're a flat out fucking beta cock piece of shit, and um, and that's on that's on God, okay, that is on fucking whatever God, whatever bullshit God you fucking, the only God I know is uh is fucking is Dumbledore, all right, that's my God. Okay. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I just, dude, I'm fucking so goddamn deep into Harry Potter. It's fucked. And I can't stop listening to the books and watching the movies and reading the books just in all forms. Um, and it was brought to my attention yesterday. Uh, uh I've never, I've never dived into this, uh, this area of the internet, um, called fan fiction, uh, erotic fan fiction. So what people do is they, Write, they write stories based on fucking, you know, shit that's like, like other, you know, other stories like Harry Potter or, uh, you know, like some movie they saw, like maybe it was like a, 
maybe there's a fucking, uh, you know, like a fast and furious, uh, fan fiction, or there's like, um, you know, Phineas and Ferb fan fiction where uh, Phineas and Ferb are double teaming their fucking sister or the mom. I don't even know if the mom, if there is a mom or like the neighbor or something, if there's a neighbor, Phineas and Ferb are double teaming her. People just come up with whatever and they fucking, they just, they, they just start writing and they make up these stories and people fucking love them. And I like, and also people are getting turned on by this shit. So people are sitting there reading about Phineas and Ferb tag team and their fucking neighbor and People are just sitting there rock hard. Guy and girl, both of them rock hard. Uh, fucking <laughs> thinking about thinking about Harry Potter fucking just slipping dick and Miss McGonagall. <laughs> oh my God, I can't... Just like the concept is the funniest fucking shit ever. But I realize that I've never... I've got to I've gotta look into this. I've got to see what's going on in these fan fictions because... Um, because there's no way it's not fucking so insane, like beyond it fucking insane. So I have to check this out. Um, I went to this website. It says 35 Harry Potter erotica fanfics to fulfill every fantasy. Like imagine the guy that fucking was just like flipping through all the fanfictions. He's just like, I, this, none of these are any of the ones that I pictured. When I was thinking Harry Potter, when I when I started to look into Harry Potter fan fiction, erotic fan fiction, um, I, the, none of these stories are the ones that I I pick I, I I thought of. I envisioned I envisioned you know I envisioned Dobby and Harry Potter tag teaming fucking uh, <laughs> a lot of tag teaming going on. I don't know, I don't know why. Fuck it, it's fucking hilarious. They're just running train. They're doing uh they're doing fucking Eiffel Tower on uh on um Madam Madam Hooch. I think that's the the Quidditch bitch. Or on uh, on Winky, the uh, the female the female uh, elf, Dobby and Harry Potter are running train on <laughs> Winky, <laughs> dude. Oh my god! And that, they're, like I guarantee that that exists because Harry Potter is so fucking goddamn big that absolutely everywhere, like there's got to be every possible combination has to have been made. Um, so this this fucking person writes, no matter what your interests, if you're a Harry Potter fan, in in brackets, and who isn't which I agree with. Uh, well, I'll tell you who isn't fucking beta Antifa cucks liberals. Um, there's a Harry Potter erotica fanfic. That's right for you. So are you not, are you an alpha male? Are you not a fucking beta liberal cuck? Well, then there's a Harry Potter erotica fanfic for you. Okay. You just hit this link down below. It'll send you to 35 of Harry Potter erotica fanfics to fulfill every fantasy you have about the wizarding world. Um, this guy, I scoured the internet to find the creme de la creme, which, oh, talking about fucking, <laughs> talking about fucking erotic shit. Creme de la creme, cream to la cream uh, of Harry Potter erotica. And now I bring you a collection of some of the internet's, internet's erotic wizarding world highlights. Please bear in mind that this list could hardly be comprehensive because there are so many fantastic pairings and stories to choose from. And feel free to share your own favorites in the comments. And if you want your Potter clean, ew, fuck no. What do I want? Bullshit made up stuff that's not like of them not fucking? Get out of here. Um, okay. Where is it? Um, a question of value. What's this one? Um, okay, what is happening here? How do I fucking get this up? Dude, what website is this? How do I get to the fucking them fucking? Um... Oh, here it is. <laughs> the owl arrives on a Thursday night in late April. Hermione is in Dover with Harry and Ron when she sees the unfamiliar brown owl. The boys are bathing in the river near the campsite. She can hear them splashing and catching brief snorts of laughter occasionally. The laughter never lasts on. She doesn't have to be with them to know that Harry looks guilty and Ron runs his fingers through his hair when they realize they're laughing. She's seen it often. And she's seen it often enough in the last nine months, after all. When she sees the bird approaching, she's instantly on guard. They don't receive communication in the traditional sense of the word now, not since their search began. 
There is a reason she spent most of last June studying advanced charms texts to learn how to conceal them, to protect them, and to make them untraceable. The very fact that an owl has found them somehow worries her. The bird gets closer, and she points her wand at it, ready to strike if necessary. For a brief moment, she considers killing it, just in case it's a danger. But in the end, she can't bring herself to do so. It offers her its foot, and she sees her name written neatly across the scroll of parchment tied precisely with a small blue ribbon. Before she takes it, she casts several charms to ensure that it's not cursed, hexed, or some sort of port key. Once she's certain it's safe, she takes the scroll, unrolls it to read. The letter is brief, the handwriting firm, and leaning slightly to the right, and their signature, shocking. Miss Granger, please meet me in the gardens at Sissinghurt Castle, Kent, tonight at ten. Come alone, and do not tell anybody about our meeting. Cordially, Peace, Percy I. Weasley. The very idea that Percy has sent her an owl is surprising enough, though she must admit that he's one of the few who could probably manage to break the charms she's cast. But the mention of a meaning has gone uh, has her going in a or has of uh, hold on. But the mention of a meeting and her going alone is ridiculously dramatic. It sounds as if he's read too many spy novels, which she knows is impossible since he's not the type. However, the fact that he spoke so sparsely and got straight to the point something she doesn't often associate with him, makes her take the owl more seriously. Before she can analyze it much further, the boys return from their bath. <laughs> okay. She hears them on the path and quickly sends the owl. Is this like a side thing where Harry and Ron are just fucking in the water? And she just doesn't mention it? Um, <laughs> uh, the letter... Um, she hears them on the path and quickly sends the owl on its way with a hastily scrawled yes on a corner of the parchment she received. The letter from Percy is, Percy is rolled up and hidden before Harry and Ron reach her. By the time they stumble into the clearing, she has a map out and is going over their route for the day. Hermione doesn't like to lie to the boys. She doesn't like lying in general at all, but especially not to Harry and Ron. She spends the entire day as they make their way up to the coastline, worrying about the letter that seems to be burning a hole in the pocket of her, de of her denims. She tries to focus because this search is important. Their last research has shown that Voldemort was in Dover area in 1955, and signs point to one of the Horcruxes being left here. The problem is that they still have no idea what he used as Horcrux. Okay, where is the... Uh, um, uh, okay, where is it? Um, we've got to get to the fucking... Okay. She apparates and finds herself near a greenhouse. It's dark and the air is thick with the scent of flowers. Dude, this is so long. This lady like made like an entire, and this is, uh, maybe it's not a lady. I'm assuming it's a lady. Um, she has made this like, she has, dude, she literally wrote a book about fucking Hermione fucking Ron's brother. Like what the hell? Okay. All right. Let's see how she, let's see how she brings this in together. She apparates and finds herself near a greenhouse. It's dark and the air is thick with the scent of flowers. She shivers as she scans the silent gardens, the trees taking on a different life in the shadows of the night. It seems that she's alone, which makes her wonder if this was some sort of trap. She grips her wand tightly and stays alert as she slowly makes her way to the greenhouse. When she gets closer, she can see a pale light through the window. It flickers like candles and she sees a shape silhouetted against the glass. Hermione reaches the door and pushes it open, hearing it squeak to break the calm silence that is giving her goosebumps. Her steps sound heavy as she walks inside, her gaze scanning the greenhouse for the person who caused the silhouette. Are you alone? The voice breaks. The voice breaks the quiet, and she turns quickly to find Percy Weasley standing behind her. Her heart races as she realizes that he could have killed her without her even being aware. So focused on what she could see that she didn't even think about looking behind her. Her hand shakes as she holds her wand and she nods, yes. She can't see him well in the shadows. The candlelight casts a pale glow on the immediate area of the greenhouse, but the walls are shaded. He steps forward and she takes a step back. It looks like Percy, his curly hair is disheveled, and his spectacles are barely balanced on the end of his nose. His tie is crooked, and the robes aren't buttoned. She remembers Percy with neat robes and tidy clothing, always anal and perfect... <laughs> Slid that in there. Always anal. Okay, well, we'll see if it's always anal in a second here. Um, and, uh, and perfect with not a single thing out of place. This man is rumpled and different than the boy she remembers. Good, he says, simply before he closes the door to the greenhouse. She hears him whisper something in Latin, but can't hear enough to identify the charm. 
She's more scared now. She realizes because this man isn't familiar. For some foolish reason, she thought he'd be the same as he had been when he was head boy. But now, she's trapped. Apparently with an untidy man and no one knows where she is. Why did you owl me? She demands to know. She refuses to tremble in fear over anyone, but especially not Percy Bloody Weasley. She's faced Death Eaters and survived. She's helped destroy two Horcruxes and survived. Surely she can deal with this situation easy enough. He looks at her, and then it's like he finally noticed she's there. His gaze is odd, as if his mind is a million other places. And he's trying to focus on one thing. He walks closer to the table where the candles are, and she notices the dark circles beneath his eyes and how his freckles stand out against his pale skin. There is ink on his jaw, and his lips are chapped and look bloody, possibly from being bitten. I don't know, he mutters, as he looks from, uh, looks from her to a stack of parchment near the candles. This is wrong. I shouldn't have. Yet I did. I wonder why. No, I can't. Perhaps he's crazy now? She read about people who hear voices and speak to themselves as if they're real. Or speak to them as if they're real. She looks from him to notice the parchment uh, to the candles. Uh, one has burned halfway. She watches the wax drip slowly until it pools on the workbench. If he becomes dangerous, she'll break the glass. She'll de- she decides before she looks at him again. You owled me, Percy. What did you want? Her voice is firm and demanding answers. Ron calls it, her head girl voice. Hey, are you the head girl? Are you the girl I come to for head? Oh, dude, how many jokes? Always with Dumbledore, too. Just show up in Dumbledore's office, and you're just like, what's up? He's like, oh, hello, my boy. What could I help you with? You just drop your pants, and you're just like, what's up, Dumble? What's up, Dumble D? What's going on? He's like, oh, my God. My God, my boy, what are you doing? Well, are you the headmaster or not? I was told you're the fucking headmaster, Dumbledore. Prove it. I'm right here. Prove that you're the fucking headmaster. Or is it all talk? Because that's fucking quite the claim to make for somebody that's not going to fucking give me some sloppy top right now. All right? Prove you're the fucking headmaster, bro. And when I'm done with you, I'm going to go to the fucking head girl and the head boy. Fucking get head from both of them. And I'll tell you fucking who, 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 the, who the real headmaster is. Um, you owled me, Percy. What did you want? Uh, her head girl voice, even though she'll never know now. Hogwarts is closed and won't reopen until this war is over. She'll be too old then, if she even survives. Her belief is that the war might be over soon and have faded with passing days. Or, yeah, okay. He fumbles with the pages and runs his finger through his hair. He bites his lip and then looks at her. I can't be here. He insists in a quietly forceful voice that makes her pay attention. It's low and makes her shudder for some reason. Then I'm leaving, she says simply. She is tired and her foot hurts. It's been a long day full of stress and worry. She doesn't have time or energy for whatever games he's playing. If they knew I was here, Percy trails off, not needing to specify who they is or what would happen if they found out. She stops in the process of turning and looks at him. Her gaze immediately goes to his arm. The thick black robe keeps her from seeing, but notices. But he notices and snorts rudely. Is that what you think? He asks sharply. He removes his robe, letting it fall to the dirty floor of the greenhouse, and his ink-stained fingers unbutton the cuff of his shirt. He rolls the white cotton up until he can see the bare skin of his forearm. You're like all of them. I thought you'd listen. It doesn't matter what I think, Percy, she tells him quietly. I've seen people that I, that I lived beside nearly every day for six years on the other end of a wand aimed at me. Trust isn't something I give casually anymore. Okay, where do they fuck? Okay, come on. They got to fuck. What the hell is going on? Dude, I'm going to be so mad if they don't fuck. Are you kidding me? Um, oh, here it is. Uh, his eyes lose focus for a moment before they clear. She has only removed the memory of the parchment and what it says. If he is fulfilling a promise to Dumbledore, she trusts that the former headmaster knew that Percy would have access to the information they might need, as was proven by the parchment that he'd given her tonight. He blinks at her as he, as, as he gets his bearings. She realizes that he won't know why he's there and panics. Before she can stop herself, she leans forward and brushes her lips against his. When she realizes what she's done, she pulls back and flushes. I'm sorry, she stammers as she takes a step away. She isn't entirely sure what happens next. It's too fast as she doesn't have time to take a full breath before his lips are pressed against her as hard. And his hands are everywhere. His hands are oh fuck here we go it's getting juicy. Uh, his hands are everywhere, dude. This guy's fucking. His hands are everywhere. Tits, ass, puss, fucking legs. He's grabbing feet. He's grabbing fucking earlobes. His hands are everywhere. Oh fuck yeah. 
<laughs> Let's go. My man, Percy. Uh, where is it? His hands are everywhere. She's pushed back against the workbench as his body moves against hers. She shouldn't do this. She knows it's far too complicated. And he's obviously not thinking clearly. This person kissing her isn't anal and tidy Percy Weasley. This man is desperate and rough talking what she's not even certain she wants to give. He's strong and, and, and forceful in a way that makes her body warm, even as her mind protests. She parts her lips to tell him they shouldn't, but his tongue is there, and then he's kissing her with a hunger she's never experienced before. <laughs> Resistance is futile, is futile. She knows, so instead, she kisses him back. For the first time in months, she feels alive. Her skin is on fire, and her heart is racing. He pushes her, sh pushes her shirt above her belly, and his fingertips slide against her warm skin as she trails him up, as he trails him up her ribs until he reaches her breast. She doesn't know what to do. Has never been in this sort of situation before, but she tries to rely on instinct, on extinct instinct. Um, her time with Victor never went beyond a few kisses and shy touches. There is nothing shy about this, however, and she whimpers when her fingers ca caress her breast through her worn cotton, <laughs> the worn cotton of her bra. She moves her hand along his back and slides it beneath his shirt. She can feel his skin now and finds him hot and sticky with sweat. He kisses her neck and sucks her skin, his teeth nibbling as she moans softly. He pushes, he pushed her bra up to free her breasts and his hands are squeezing them lightly as she stares at a potted plant as she makes noises she didn't think were possible. What was she, what noises was she making? She's just fucking, oh my God, dude, I can't fucking handle this. Dude, this is fucking, dude, this is, this is my favorite mental illness. Dude, writing fan fiction for Harry Potter is my favorite mental illness. This is now, this is the best fucking thing I've ever read or seen in my life. Holy fuck, this is good. Oh my God. Dude, this is insane. Well, let's see if they end up fucking. Um, her jeans and knickers are on the floor and he's between her. And I said knickers, okay? There is a heart, it is a CK in there. Knickers, okay. Don't. I'm not gonna keep saying it either because it's gonna get. I, I'm gonna. People are gonna fucking. You know. Take that out of context. Um. Oh uh, yeah. Her jeans and her knickers are on the uh, are on the floor, and he's between her legs. She looks down to see him staring at her, and then he lowers his head. His tongue is on her, and she gasps as he licks and laughs until she's writhing on the workbench. <laughs> Holy fuck! This lady goes fucking deep into this. Um. Uh, he's not, dude, he's not, he's not gentle. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. It hurts when he, oh wait, hold on. Where did we go? Um, Percy is suddenly over, over is suddenly over her kneeling on the workbench as she tries to stop trembling to focus, but can't. It hurts when he thrusts inside her, but not as bad as she feared after hearing the stories in her dorm. She whines and cringes as he sinks deep into her and bites her lip at the slight pain as he pushes all the way through he's not gentle and in a way she's glad the hurt fades as he begins to move in and out with deep thrusts that have her skin slapping together have their skin slapping together he bites her breast and holds her hips so tight she knows she'll have bruises jesus christ percy getting fucking after it after initial discomfort it starts to feel good she moves her hands beneath his shirt and scratches his back hard enough to hurt, but he bucks forward and drives her hard against the wooden table. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Uh, uh, dude, when he pulls out, she feels like she needs to pee. She's wet and sore despite it feeling good and after the pain faded. She glances down to look at him to see what he'd been pushing inside her and thinks it's rather ugly. It's limp and she flinches when she notices a faint trace of blood mixed in with the fluids that's covered him. His hair around is darker around it is darker than on his head and curlier. She notices freckles on his lower belly that appear into the curls. What? She just, what is happening? Uh oh my god. Oh dude. Dude, I can't. I gotta fucking leave it there. Oh my god. That was fucking chaos, dude. And there's not like there's there's no shortage of these things. I mean I <laughs> Oh my fucking god, man. Um uh holy fucking hell, dude.
Jesus Christ. Fucking, did he just rape her? <laughs> I just read it. Like, she was into it, I guess, a little bit. But he was, like, fucking beat the shit out of her. Holy fuck. Wow. That was incredible. Um, oh, my God. All right. Uh, I got to go. I'm going to end it there. Uh, so I'm going to go do some real alpha male shit and read Harry Potter fan fiction in my room. Um, wow. What a fucking, what a thing that is. Dude, and there's, like, there's... Oh, there's definitely like thousands, tens and th tens of thousands of those stories of people just imagining Harry Potter people fucking each other like aggressively and shit. Holy fuck. That was incredible. All right. Um, all right, alphas. I'm fucking out of here for the week. Uh, fucking thanks for listening. Hit the uh, subscribe button on that podcast app. Um, Follow the podcast on Instagram and uh, follow me on Instagram at SmartAssPod for the show for all the clips and at AIDS Life for uh, my personal Instagram. And uh, uh, yeah, got a great guest coming on next week. So uh, if you're listening and hey, if you see any funny internet videos throughout the week, send them over to me. Uh, we're going to be playing them. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a fucking, uh, we're going to have a hell of a show next week. So uh, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, as always, yeah, download the show. Uh, share it with your friends and your enemies. Uh, don't share it with fucking betas so that they learn how to not be fucking beta bitches and get into Harry Potter fan fiction. Um, thank you guys for listening. I'm, I'm going to go jerk off to the thought of, uh, of Hermione getting fucked by Ron's brother. See ya.